In this tutorial we're going to make this ink bleed effect. This is a direct port of an After Effects tutorial by Ben Marriott and I've left a link in the description to his original video. Okay, as usual we're going to be working in Fusion. Uh, if you watched my last video you'll know there's several ways of getting into Fusion. If you haven't watched it, go and see it now. I'm going to go with my Fusion, my favourites bar here, bring a Fusion comp in, and we'll go into Fusion. So the first thing we're going to need is our rectangle. So bring in a background, attach a rectangle node to the mask input of the background and feed the background into your media out. Here we can see our rectangle. Select the background to change the colour. Make it whatever colour you want. And then select the rectangle. And we'll just increase its size. You can grab either edge and just pull and it will increase either horizontally or vertically. But if you grab it right in the corner here, you can do both at once. So we'll do so. Next element you want is your text. So bring in a text node. We'll just pop that into the viewer and put in some text. And we will format our text as we want it. So change the font. Increase the size. And then we will merge our text onto the output of the background. This creates a merge node. And when we view that, we now have our text on our background. You can tweak your text, change the color, like so. Now what I did in the example, and this is an optional step, if you come into your text box itself, right click and select character level styling. This turns on this modifier button at the top. If you click on the modifier, you can come to this screen. And what it says is select text in viewer for style options. Until you've got any text selected, there's nothing happens here. But if you come into your viewer and drag a box around one or more of your letters, you see the little green bounding boxes here. So this eye is now going to be affected by whatever we do. And what I'm going to do is come into the shading tab. I'm just going to change the color and it just changes the color of the eye. We can do the same for the N. And we can do the same for the K. Like so. Okay, so we've got our text set up. Now to get this to work properly, we need to merge this text onto a transparent background. The reason being, if you don't, when you add your blur, it stops at the edges of the text and doesn't look right. So we need the blur to be able to spill past the text. So bring in a background node. Just disconnect this text from here a second and take the output of your text onto the output of the background. This produces a merge node. Select your background, drop the alpha to zero so that this background is now transparent and reconnect it to your merge. Nothing appears to have changed, but it does make a difference. So the secret to this trick is a node called Vary Blur. So if you select your Merge To node to make it active, Shift spacebar and type vary. You'll see vary blur. Hit enter to add it and it adds it into your node flow. At the minute, nothing's happened because the vary blur needs a blur map to tell it where to blur and where not to blur. To get the blur map, we're going to use a fast noise node. Come up to your hotbar. Second from the left is fast noise. Just drag it into your workflow. Right click on the output of your fast noise, just drag it over the very blur and let go and you get your various options and you're looking for blur image like so. Now what we're going to do, I'm going to put the fast noise in this window here and we're going to have our output in our right hand window. 
if you come to your very blur change method to soften you can increase the quality but that will increase the render time and you can also increase your blur size at the minute you're not seeing very much because you've got quite a wishy-washy fast noise so if we come into our fast noise we're going to increase the detail we're going to increase the contrast and now you can see that we're getting certain parts are blurred certain parts aren't and they correspond to where you've got white you get in blur and where it's transparent you're not and finally we're going to start pulling the scale up and now you can see you get in the sort of bleeding of the edges once you've got somewhere that you think looks okay come back to your very blur and then you can crank up the blur size and now you get a much more marked effect and from here on in it's about tweaking and playing with these settings to get the kind of look that you want you can also change the seethe which will change the pattern of the fast noise Once you've tweaked, I think I took my blur size up to about 20 in the end to get the, the best look. So once you've got the look you want, come to where you want your blur or your, your ink bleed to have finished. So say after a second, so frame 24 in my case, I'm going to select the very blur. I'm going to come and I'm going to keyframe blur size. I'm now going to go back to frame zero. And I'm just going to drop the blur size down to zero. And that is your ink bleed effect. So if you now come back to the edit tab, give it a couple of seconds just to cache. Hope you found it helpful and useful. Please feel free to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell. And I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.